today we bring to you uh, China's newly appointed special envoy to Afghanistan, the world's latest hotspot. Ambassador Yue Xiaoyong is one of the most seasoned diplomats from the PRC. Uh, we are pleased to have him with us today. Uh, Ambassador Yue, welcome to Guancha and welcome to China Forum. Yeah, thank you, Shimo. It's really a great honor and a pleasure to be here in this platform, the China Forum. Great. So, Ambassador, let me first ask, uh, where are you sitting? Where are you now? I'm in Pakistan, in Islamabad. Yes. Uh, yeah, for several days already. Okay. So, what's it like in Pakistan? Are, they, are the Pakistanis happy? Or do they see this as a great victory for Pakistan? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is my first visit to Pakistan. And uh, Pakistan, you know, we, between China and the Pakistan, we have enjoyed this all weather strategic cooperative partnership uh, relations, which really provided a very good foundation for two sides to communicate, to exchange views, and to cooperate upon the question of Afghanistan situation. Indeed, Pakistan played a very important role, both as an important regional countries and important neighbor upon Afghanistan issue. People here, both the government and the public, are really concerned and have great interest in keen on the changes and the crisis in Afghanistan. They contribute really a lot to the peace, reconciliation, and the ongoing intra-Afghan talks previously, and now the promotion of the peace and the reconciliation of Afghanistan. We have very good dialogue. Great. Uh, so, Ambassador, about a month ago, U.S. President Biden said that it was going to be highly unlikely that the Taliban would be able to take over Afghanistan because the Taliban had only 75,000 fighters and the government, Afghan government armed forces had, was 300,000 strong and heavily equipped by uh, advanced American weapons. Uh, yet, um, in a month's time, less than a month's time, Taliban had taken over yeah, yeah. Afghanistan. Now, the fact that they did it so easily and so smoothly, is this s some evidence that w we can rely upon to, to, to assess, that to, to, to arrive at a conclusion that Taliban does have significant grassroots support among the Afghan population? Thank you. This is a very good uh, description of the situation and also a very good question. Uh, let me put it this way. The irresponsible and the hasty withdrawal of the troops of the United States, as well as the NATO, is really the major factor of the disaster and uh, the crisis or messy situation, the cha chaotic situation in Afghanistan. This is really a great lesson, I believe, the United States should draw. For 20 years, they put so much into Afghanistan and spent so much money, more than two trillion US dollars and uh, several thousands of casualties now have such a messy uh, situation. It is not only a military failure, it is also a failure in terms of international politics and the credibility on the part of America. We hope, and I speak to my counterpart, from the United States directly in our bilateral uh, exchanges too, that the United States should do all the lessons and really redress the mistakes. Don't repeat mistakes in the current ongoing efforts to deal with the crisis of the Afghanistan issue. And in future, uh, when we together with the international society in handling the issue. United States still one of the important player and outside actor vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan issue. And we really hope they will draw this heavy lesson uh, they had, the failure of the military, political, and uh, credibility in this Afghanistan issue, uh, joined the international efforts to promote really constructively the peace reconstruction and the future political structure of the country so that we can really, with other countries, effectively fight terrorism and to make sure the future of Afghanistan will not be the uh, safe haven of the growth of the terrorism and also will not be the threat of the neighbors of the nations 
around of the region and the international relations. We are in this ongoing process. As for the uh, question you mentioned, indeed, the situation really show that in the international, international uh, arena to use power politics, to use military means to solve the problem, especially like hotspots in Afghanistan, is not the way to do it. And it caused more problems than solve it. You know, for 20 years, some country like the United States, they want to move the model of their own in their own country upon quite another sovereign countries. This approach, this way is the root of what in their mind in dealing with the international affairs, in handling the hotspots cause so much disasters and the troubles, not in the handling of the Afghanistan issue, but also in handling other hotspots and to deal with the uh, regional conflicts and in other international affairs in general. We should all remember the lessons United States have in this issue and really come back to the United Nations Charter and based on core aims and the purpose of the United Nations Charter, the based on the international uh, multilateral approach, and also really from both the policy and the practice, uh, respect the sovereignty, the territorial integrity, and the independence of our sovereign state, and always remember and refrain from intervening into internal affairs of a sovereign state is a very important principle in dealing with the issues like this. Yes, good. So, Ambassador, now, you know, the Taliban uh, is uh, almost all the time portrayed uh, in the Western media as a, a tyrannical group of people. Um, and, and obviously, we see images in Kabul airport. Uh, there were quite a, a lot of uh, Af Afghans running away uh, from, yeah. from them. Uh, but of course, we got to keep in mind, Afghanistan is a nation of nearly 40 million people. And the people at the yeah. Kabul yeah. airport yeah. was but a small portion of that population. And I want to come back to my first question, which is, you know, 75,000 fighters without much, you know, heavy weapon support um, was able to overtake the entire country against 300,000 troops supported by the lone superpower in the world with the most more advanced weapons, the fact that they were able to do that, I mean, do you think they have significant, at least significant, grassroots support within the Afghan people? Yeah, that is a question. Uh, from what I feel and I have met with them, both in Tianjin, uh, when our state councillor and uh, foreign minister Wang Yi invite them, uh, the de delegation headed by Mr. Baladar, the director of the political office in Doha, to there to have meetings and conversations. And also after that, I also have the opportunity to meet them in our both six plus two meetings in Doha and the Choika plus one, China, Russia, uh, United States, and Pakistan. In all this uh, multilateral conversation, I have the opportunity to, to meet them and to have the exchanges. I saw a lot of reports you have uh, just now said that there are a lot of comments and uh, criticisms and also some positive comments on their changes and also the doubts and the suspicions of what their behavior, whether they are really change, uh, changed or not. From what I can see, Taliban has already become an uh, important political and the military force of the nation. As we said, we respect the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence of Afghan people to handling their own affairs. Now we have Taliban forces, and we also have other stakeholders in Afghanistan. The best way for us is to have the dialogue with them, to engage them, and work together for the peace reconciliation, inclusive government constituting efforts, fighting against terrorism, arrange and uh, rebuild the country in a way that will be the friendly with the neighbors, the region and the international society. 
from what we can see now, Taliban has promised they are going to have the, this process with the regional and the neighboring and the international effort, efforts. They are going to have the dialogue. They are doing that. And, uh, and I participate in the dialogue, some of the dialogues between Taliban and uh, the former republic, like uh, Mr. Chairman Abdullah Abdullah and uh, others. Number one, they know they have to have the unity of the country to reconstruct, to build the nation. And they need the peace and the reconciliation of different uh, political forces. And also we, we share wisdom that is very, very important for Taliban and other stakeholders resolutely fighting terrorism and the Taliban itself should make a clean and clear break from any terrorist groups is very clear. And that is also what they have stated and pre presented and a part and parcel of the current peace and the reconciliation process. Of course, we not only listen to what they said and we pay more attention to what they are doing and they are going to do. So far, we have seen some positive trends in Taliban when they entered Kabul and when they take over many, many cities and almost all of the country, except the very few somewhere here and there. This is ongoing process. This is why we keep engaged, engaged with them together with other stakeholders to make sure that we as neighbor countries, as regional countries, we helped to create an environment and the conditions and so that they can really hold the fate, the future of the country in their own hands. That is why in our dialogue with them, no matter it is in the SCO, the Central Asia SCO, Afghan liaison group meeting take place in July, and also in Tianjin dialogue, in other, a lot of mechanisms initiated by the neighboring countries and the regional countries from Russia, Turkey, uh, Central Asia countries, uh, from Iran, uh, from here, Pakistan, and from themselves in Doha process too. All this, we like to join efforts to encourage the positive trends Taliban have and other stakeholders together they have. And at the same time, we watch any negative elements there. And that is why we also pointed out international society should join hands together to work with them to encourage the trends of Afghanistan and from the stakeholders, including Taliban as major political and military force towards a peace, reconciliation, and inclusive political structure, friendly relations with the neighbor and the international society fighting terrorism and preventing the country from becoming a new safe haven of the terrorist groups and uh, preventing the country from spilling over of the current fluid crisis situation. All this, we are in the middle of the efforts. We also emphasize, maybe I now I take too long to uh, present this, but it's very important. It is a crisis situation. It is a peace promotion, reconciliation process. At the same time, it is an opportunity. It is crisis, it is also opportunity. Top opportunity from my perspective is to see for the first time over the past 20 years or over the past 40 years or 70 years, Afghan have an opportunity to hold fate in their own hands. Yes. We should give them to enjoy a full play of how they seize this opportunity to realize the peace, sustainable stability, and the, the peaceful reconstruction, the inclusive constitution, then not the constitution, uh, whatever you call it, of the country. So we together, China uh, as both major country in the United Nations, in the international arena, is the biggest neighbor of Afghanistan and also long time traditionally friendly neighbors with Afghanistan. We really like to see Afghanistan to 
seize this opportunity to find their own path, supported by their own people, and uh, re really suitable to their own conditions and to their develop itself. Yes, I mean, it's uh, certainly you're right, Ambassador. This is probably the first time in many decades that Afghans can determine the fate of their own country by themselves without foreign interference and foreign troops on their soil. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. From my uh, encounter with them, their political office in Doha and others, they were really keen in learning the experience of the neighbors and the other successful countries and the learning from China, of course. But we always say you should find your own suitable way to develop yourself, to find stability, to find the peace and reconstruction. But of course, we are ready to help. We are ready to join their efforts. And we like to develop and continue our long term traditional friendship with, Afgan with Afghanistan. Good. Uh, so, Ambassador, since you have uh, met them and dealt with them uh, many times, uh, let me ask you this. What are they like? What are the Taliban oh. people like? I mean, we see them. Are they really scary people as we see from CNN or BBC? Or are they normal people like you and me? <laughs> what are they oh. like? Yeah, from my, from my meeting of them, it, it reminds me of the uh, like uh, another people from Afghanistan, from the region, from the village, any, they are friendly, they like to exchange views with me and with others, uh, they listen, they explain things. Of course, uh, they like to present their positions, but they always like to exchange views with people. In Doha, they participated almost all the uh, multilateral, big or small dialogue platforms. I attended almost all the major multilateral dialogues there, and we always invited them uh, to the platform, to the meeting, and to have the dialogues. And uh, that is a very good dialogue, very constructive. Of course, there are some sticky points, the process people concentrating then is how they can restart intra-Afghan political talks between two sides. So one week later, when we left, the situation uh, changed in the way that the former president Ghani left uh, Kabul and the Taliban entered the Kabul. And the people now concentrating on how they really manage the situation. It is both an opportunity, as I said, it is both an opportunity and a challenge to them, whether they can peacefully manage it and to whether they can maintain the stability. We also emphasize that uh, I remember I left Doha, began my trip again. I talked to them together with our other embassies and we talked to them in Beijing from our headquarters uh, of the foreign ministry. Our state councillor and the foreign minister gave a lot of calls around the world with many of his counterpart. And we are special envoy in the, in the, in the front. We emphasize that they should really pay attention to protecting the safety and the security of Chinese embassy and other embassies there, and the protecting the lives and the institutions and the companies of China there. They promised. So, so far, our ambassador and our embassy is still in Kabul, and they are still operating and work. So far, so good. We continue to emphasize. This is a very, uh, very important point. We keep to engage them and to work with them to tide over the current crisis. Good. Um, so Afghanistan is a neighbor of China's. Um, we share a border, a small one, <laughs> uh, but it's a critical neighbor. Um, so uh, if we continue to engage in Afghanistan, Ambassador, what are China's primary interests in Afghanistan? Yeah. What, what are most important to China? It is a very good question. I think uh, it is uh, like uh, our Chinese uh, foreign affairs policy in, in general, as our uh, government and as our uh, party always, uh, we put the people first. It is uh, our people's call and our nation's, our country's security and our people's security, stability that gave us the mission for our foreign policy in general and for our efforts in Afghanistan, like in this is very specific. We have the 90 some kilometers 
voting wisdom. And if you consider other neighboring countries like Pakistan and uh, Tajikistan, yeah. and we have we share the Tajikistan with Tajikistan and with Pakistan much longer, hundreds and thousands kilometers border with both the neighbor countries and directly with Afghanistan. So we are very, very concerned about the stability of the of Afghanistan, about how they tied over the crisis and about how and whether this, there will be spilling over of the violence and the, and the chaotic situation, especially how they really effectively fighting against terrorism. And uh, like we have a very typical organization of terrorism, Chinese people watch very closely, uh, which also affect our West or border areas and our Xinjiang areas, ETIM. And we have repeatedly uh, tell them that we like to work together for this. And that they have also promised to continue and effectively to watch the situation to make the clear cut off with any possible links with the terrorist groups and with the terrorist organization in general. So all this is very directly connecting with China's interests. And so is the common concern and common interests of the neighboring and the regional and the international society at large. And at the same time, of course, you take the longer view and the con uh, constructively look ahead. China is also ready for the peaceful reconstruction. And not only we for our China's opening and the development and the construction of our own countries, and we also like to develop the win-win cooperation, the mutual beneficial cooperation with them. We have already had with our partners around this region. In the north, we have the One Belt, One Road with Central Asia countries, which is very successful. And there are a lot of promising and the potential connectivity projects, connectivity and the transportation energy uh, plans. These regional countries themselves have a lot of very good thinking, very good initiative and proposals in my trip. And also, if you go to South Asia areas, West and South Asia areas, from Iran all the way to, to South Asia, Pakistan, and other countries, they also think of how to take advantage of their regional cooperation, uh, both with each other and with China. Like in Pakistan, we have already had the economic corridor there. I heard their uh, special envoy told me that they very much positively considering how to move this economic corridor, the benefits, and share it with Afghanistan. Yeah. Both sides are very interested. I have traveled almost all these uh, regional countries and neighboring countries, all the way from Russia, Turkey, Uzbekistan, Turkestan, Tajikistan, Iran, and uh, Pakistan. I didn't go to uh, Turkmenistan because all the uh, airline is uh, temporarily locked down. But I uh, have the opportunity to meet with their deputy foreign minister in my meeting in Doha. As you rightly put it, Shimo, that you are quite well informed that this is my get to know trip. I like to meet all, the, all of my counterparts and all the countries around this region, including uh, Qatar, where I work as ambassador. So from all these uh, exchanges and views, I feel there's a strong consensus in the neighboring countries and the regions to see the peace and the reconstruction of Afghanistan. They are ready from different level, from different perspective, but they are ready to help both on the peace of side process and on the reconstruction side. So from this perspective, you can cautiously optimistic that once Afghanistan people really grasp this opportunity and take the fate in their own hands. Give them opportunity. Cast away the power politics. Cast away the hegemonic thinking. And cast away the high-handed military and the more imposing of the, whatever you call it, so-called other countries' model of imposing something on them. We have a very hopeful and a promising future in Afghanistan as well as their relations with the rest of the world. Very good. I take that as your message to the departing superpower <laughs> in Afghanistan, its military uh, uh, allies. Yes. Um, so uh, let me, uh, uh, I think we're running out of time, but uh, let's make some predictions, okay? Uh, so when will a formal government be formed uh, in, the, in the new 
Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan? Where, when do you think uh, they can finish the process of forming a real government? It's a question uh, in all, a lot of people's mind, in my mind, in a lot of people's mind. Now we are right in the middle of it. So we have a lot of news. Some of news, we have some uncertainties there. This is why we are watching. This is why we, we, we keep engaging people there and try to have the right interact. So far, from what I heard, Taliban is making contact with other stakeholders and uh, some leading personalities who are involved in the previous intra talks and the peace and the reconciliation process. Some of them have returned and remained in Afghanistan. And uh, there are some talks taking place. Shimo, you are right. As we are talking, the conversation we are having now is sort of thinking aloud. We are also together. I like to get your wisdom and uh, my colleagues in the China Forum. Also, I know you have made a lot of studies, very valuable studies too. I show Chinese scholars and uh, experts have very much involved in this collective efforts from China and uh, from you, yours uh, interaction with the international regional uh, community. This is very constructive. And uh, the challenge for international society, for the neighboring countries, for the international society is right now how to really encourage the positive trends in Afghanistan, including Taliban, and how to avoid possible repeat yes. of historical lessons, yes. both inside Taliban, inside Afghanistan, and from the international arena. Yes. Yeah, from here, uh, I like to see that the hope uh, China Forum is continuing this way. We work together for the peace and the reconstruction, reconciliation and the reconstruction, peaceful reconstruction of the nation. Well, from what I can uh, hear uh, from you, from what I could hear from you in this interview, uh, I, I feel I'm, I'm encouraged. I think, you know, look, in the last 20 years, uh, as we said, the United States and its military allies has spent trillions of dollars, had suffered thousands of deaths of their own troops and many, many more, tens of thousands of Afghan deaths and, and, and perhaps more um, uh, over the last two decades and, and had agitly failed, um, uh, not only yeah. of their own mission, uh, but also um, Afghanistan, Afghan people continue to suffer. Uh, have been suffering for 20 years and continue to suffer as in no better shape than they were 20 years ago, if not worse. Um, and from what I could hear from you, China, if China is going to play an important role in the future of Afghanistan, it's going to be very different from what the West has been doing there for the last decades. It looks like you're paying more attention to economic development, how to work with neighbors, um, and, and looks like you would assiduously avoid imposing your political model on them. Um, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, you, you, you are raising a very uh, important question. This is a question really we have to all the major powers and uh, especially the United States, frankly speaking, uh, should uh, consider. That's why just as our state councilor and the foreign minister Wang Yi in his uh, meeting and uh, online conversation with uh, a lot of uh, foreign ministers, his counterpart in both in the international, international at large and in the regional. It's a very busy process. And in our uh, encounter here as a special envoy and as uh, our embassy around here to make the efforts, the United States should really draw the lesson from this. The core of the lesson is to really to see whether you are really respect the sovereignty and the territorial integrity and the independence of our sovereign state. So in whole process of handling this crisis in Afghanistan, of help to have the political settlement or the peaceful uh, uh, reconstruction or peaceful reconciliation of the nation to have the new life of this country, we have to follow Afghan-led, Afghan-owned principle. We have to pay very close attention to whether you are doing something really reflecting you are respect a sovereign country. At the same time, as a responsible international actor, we, of course, we like to give our help as an outsider 
as a friendly neighbor, as a constructive partner in the region, and uh, to see whether we together, with the efforts of Afghanistan to fight against terrorism, to prevent the disaster of the humanitarian disaster, to do the necessary assistance to help them. Not to uh, use your word, not to just, uh, whenever there's uh, some problems, you deflecting to, to others and uh, imposing your own model upon another sovereign country. The history has already shown this is not the way in the past, at the present, and in the future, in handling the international relations. Oh, so, Ambassador, including... if you're able to get on Afghan television, what will you say to the Afghan people on behalf of China? I really didn't think of that question yet. But I, one day, I, if, if there's the opportunity, I really would say that China is a friend of Afghanistan. And we have all along have this uh, traditional friendly relations we set up all diplomatic relations very early in 1950s. And historically, we have uh, this hundred thousand years of the ancient Silk Road traditional friendship. And now we have the opportunity to, based on all these relations, based on the principle of respecting each other, the sovereignty and independence of the country, we have the opportunity to realize the peace reconstruction and reconciliation and the reconstruction of Afghanistan to enjoy along with China's peaceful path of the foreign policy and we share the common future uh, together. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Appreciate your time. And thank you. Uh, and, and good luck and be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mo. Yes, thank you very much. Chinese side is really shocked, as we are shocked as the special envoy, not only me, uh, many other envoys, special envoys as our Choika plus one counterparts by the incident, terrible uh, terrorist attack in the vicinity areas of Kabul airport and uh, caused so many so heavy casualties. I have sent condolences to both the Taliban and the stakeholders in Afghanistan and to my Joyka plus one counterpart, like the United States Special Envoy, to express our condolences. This incident is really, again, shows that security, both in Kabul and Afghanistan, is really in a serious situation. We should pay very close attention to the situation and make sure the soft landing and the smooth transition of the situation in Afghanistan to facilitate this intra-political uh, settlement and to realize the peace, stability, security process of Afghanistan. It also shows that the terrorist threat is so real and is very serious. And we should also pay close attention to the fighting and to the preventing against the terrorist groups in Afghanistan. In China, we know, uh, and also international community all knows that ETIM is one of the international terrorist groups in Afghanistan. And uh, we have spoken to Taliban and the Taliban has promised that they will make a clean and clear break away from all the terrorist groups and will fight resolutely against the terrorist groups in Afghanistan. And the future of Afghanistan will not be the, again, the safe haven of any terrorist groups. And the ETIM, as we all know, is the international terrorist groups enlisted by the United Nations Security Council as a terrorist groups. And they have committed really a lot of very serious uh, terrorist acts and crimes against China, against Chinese people, and it is really a threat. We hope, uh, we do hope the Taliban and the stakeholders in Afghanistan will carry out their promise and they will take action to really have an effective fight against this kind of terrorist groups and uh, make sure the future of Afghanistan will not be the 
again, the safe haven and the growth place of the international terrorist groups. Yesterday, here I met with the deputy prime minister and foreign minister of uh, Qatar. And here we have, we used to have our Trika plus one meetings. And uh, both, of, both sides were shocked by the incident and uh, we committed to keep our dialogues and the coordination and uh, based on our good bilateral relations that enhance our, our coordination and cooperation upon the issue of Afghanistan and to promote and facilitate the peace and stability, stability process for the Afghan, Afghanistan political settlement. The special envoys between us, we also keep uh, close uh, contacts and uh, we work together. On the one hand, I repeatedly reaffirmed that uh, we should not have the double standards in the fighting against terrorism groups. And at the same time, we should remember the heavy lessons in Afghanistan caused by the hasty and the irresponsible withdrawal of the troops by the United States and uh, take uh, effective action to bring the situation to normality as early as possible. We fly out of uh, Islamabad uh, in the small hours of, uh, I remember it is 20, 23rd, in the early morning of 24th and the touchdown upon the airport in uh, Doha early morning. And the whole day we are involved in uh, other activities and uh, soon on the 26th, I think it is 26th, we have that uh, terrorist attack. It's really very, very shocked. And uh, all of us, very sad to learn the tolls of human lives and the casualties are so heavy and it grows each day. In the first days, we heard the five American soldiers and uh, 60 other people were seriously wounded. But now the numbers uh, grow every day. Uh, it's really very sad. It is a really real and a very serious situation both to streamline withdrawal and uh, to redress the mistakes uh, caused by the United States for this messy and chaotic situation. At the same time, we are sad for the loss of lives and uh, for those families who lost their loved ones. And uh, we should draw the lessons and uh, really constructively facilitate, number one, to make sure the situation in this critical time uh, in Afghanistan would be as smooth as possible and to prevent such disasters, uh, especially the terrorist groups. And number two, we should really seriously uh, think and implement our fighting against terrorism and then those double standards and uh, prevent the Afghan from becoming the safe haven of the terrorist groups again. Thirdly, I do hope the stakeholders and Taliban will do effectively fighting against ETIM, which had uh, committed a lot of crimes and uh, terrorist acts against China and Chinese people to win the trust and uh, to work together with other stakeholders to realize the peace, stability, and political settlement of the country. So far, as we know, our embassy and our, our ambassadors are still working in uh, Kabul. And uh, so far as we are talking, we have not found uh, the casualties uh, from uh, our Chinese community and uh, our institutions there. But we have reminded uh, to Taliban and to stakeholders in Afghanistan, double their efforts to enhance and uh, to make sure the security of our embassy uh, institution, Chinese institutions and the people there are safe. Yeah, we are following the uh, events very closely. Thank you.